<laughs> what a place. It looks even better from here. Wow. Well, this has been an amazing day. Uh, I was really happy to get the invitation from Martin, and uh, I saw that Kathy Sierra was on the bill, and I've been a, a close fan uh, since, I remember, I think 2003, 2004 was a period when we were intensely passing around every blog post that she wrote at 37 Signals and saying, this is, this is the website with all the answers. She really gets it, you know? So it's been great to share the stage today. Um, uh, and I'm really happy to be here. Uh, so uh, what I want to share with you today are some very specific tools that uh, I've had to come up with, well, basically to help me stay sane. Uh, because as you know, uh, in the product management role, it's not just like, you know, get the to-dos and then design the, the design you were supposed to do and then come back to it the next day, you know, we're actually responsible for making up those to-dos and figuring out what everybody should do. So it can get a little hairy, yeah. And uh, I've been working on a lot of projects over the years, been at 37 Signals, now Basecamp for 12 years, and also done a lot of side projects. And uh, uh, over the years, dealing with the same stresses again and again, I've come up with a few very specific tools that I want to share with you, and I hope that you can use them when you start your next project or even if you return to whatever you're working on right now. And uh, in order to sort of put these tools into context for you, I want to tell you about a pattern I've noticed on every product I've worked on. There's always this phase in the beginning. There's a sort of honeymoon, uh, light bulbs and ahas, and uh, a wonderful beginning to each product. It's this kind of aha period where we have a kind of some product concept in our mind, and we have a business model, we've got some definition of why this is going to be valuable, we know we have the technical ability to build it, we've got everything together and we've got this like product idea, you know, like for us at Basecamp in 2003, 2004, it was this simple notion, hey, we're working with clients and it's a little hard to manage the client work, what if we had something like a password protected blog and we would just give the password to the client and all everybody on the team could go to it, and then when we had some work for the client project, we'd post it there, and they would comment, and then everybody would know what was happening, and it would all be on the record, and we'd package each of these little password-protected blogs up and call it a project, and we'd call it Basecamp, ah, right? And we thought, oh, this is gonna be great, right? And then you, you, you draw a few sketches, you know, like this will connect to that, and you're like, done, this is gonna be easy. Right, and because uh, the concept is so clear, and then you know, and, and I, I, I still haven't learned since then. I still have the same illusion every time I start a new project. You know, oh, but the idea is so crystal clear. You know, and then what happens is eventually, somewhere along the line, a day later, a week later, a month later, um, I, 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 I'm in a situation like this, where uh, I'm kind of lying awake at night, and I'm thinking, you know, but what? Did we test the mobile version of that template for the new message screen? Or, uh, you know, uh, that bug that just came up today, are we going to remember that? Because that's more important than the bug that I heard about yesterday. And, and where am I going to put it? And, uh, right? Uh, we know how to build stuff. We've got good design people. We've got a great business idea, but it doesn't matter. Even if we've got all that stuff figured out, there's still this, like, uh, it just gets daunting. Yeah? You guys know the feeling? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, every time I kind of come to this point in a project or a product I'm working on, uh, I end up using the same tool. And I used it so many years in a row that I decided I should tell you about it. <laughs> okay. And uh, it's a very simple thing. It's just, it's just a map. And uh, it's a map of the different capabilities that need to be present. And uh, I'm actually going to give you a slightly nerdy way to define what this map is. Uh, and then after we have a good sense of what it is and how I use it, I'm going to walk you through very specifically the steps you go through to, to get to it, okay? And uh, basically, this map is like when I close my eyes, this is how I see the product, okay? And uh, this is a little example I'm going to walk you through. This is a project I'm working on for a nonprofit. This nonprofit has branches throughout North America, and uh, each of these branches runs more or less autonomously. And uh, they all need some way that they can uh, put some payment form online when they have a new project that comes up that they need to gather some money for yeah, from in a fundraising way. 
And so uh, different projects come up, and they also would like to put on some kind of membership form so people can become members and pay with their credit cards. And we looked at all kinds of nonprofit donation, fundraising, management, enterprise things, and they were all monolithic and didn't fit our needs and were too complicated and just weren't right. So I decided, of course, we'll just build it ourselves. Right? And uh, so started working on that. And uh, there's a few different kind of key areas to this. Uh, and the, 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 the way that this product is mapped out, I'm going to use two sort of a little nerdy definition here. What I want to do is I want to identify the capabilities that the product needs to have that are orthogonal to each other. It's a nerd word, orthogonal, but we actually, it's a word that we use at Basecamp when we're talking about work all the time. It's like one of our main vocabulary words, actually. And, you know, orthogonal means that you have two things and they can move independent of each other. Yeah? Versus something that's coupled, where they have to change or happen together. So I want to find things that are orthogonal because in practical terms, as the one who's managing the work, orthogonal means when I'm working on this, I don't have to think about that. Yeah? And when I'm working on this, I don't have to think about that. And when this is done, I can completely wipe it out of my mind because these other things are unrelated. Yeah? So that's orthogonal. Capabilities. What I'm doing here is I want to focus on the things that are part of the domain right? The domain, it's the, the actual situation that comes up in life that the product is meant to address, yeah? And uh, the reason I mention that is because you often see people mapping things out and they say, well, we'll do all the email templates, and we'll do all the mobile templates, and we'll do the database tables, right? But those are implementation things, yeah? And what we want to figure out is what are the individual capabilities that we learned from focusing on the domain that I can work on orthogonally, okay? I'm telling you, it sounds, maybe it sounds a little theoretical or technical at the moment, but this is the sanity, okay? And here's why. Because if I'm able to identify something that's separate from something else and work on it, I get to this wonderful state called done. <laughs> There's a whole thing that I got to think, say, I don't have to think about that anymore, right? It's wonderful, yeah? So for example, you know, in this case, we have uh, there's these two areas on the top. There's this uh, forms area. So this means different projects are arising at different times. So we need to create new donation forms that say, if you give money for this project, it will go in this bucket labeled money for that project, right? And everything will happen as it should. Uh, and these forms and projects for fundraising change over time. But regardless of what you're a member of or what you're paying for, uh, the situation still comes up that you're a member and you need to cancel your membership, update your credit card, change the amount, this kind of thing, right? And whether you're changing your, what, what project you're changing your membership for is a separate matter from the ability to create projects. Yeah? So we identify those, separate them out, and I've got this area here called member service. And so I can work on that independently, finish it up, when it's done, meaning design is done, programming is done, testing is done, any kind of operation support I need. If I have to tell support people about how to, what to do when the feature launches, everything related to this one capability, done. Yeah? Then I can keep going, and I can keep doing each of these different capabilities and checking them off one after the other because they're orthogonal. Okay? This is the road to sanity. It really is. And uh, here's how it plays out in detail, because, okay, that's a little high level. How does it actually work out? Let's say I'm working on this member self-service capability, okay? Um, if this were just a set of five things that I needed to do to check it off, then I could just do those things. But of course, we're talking about product development, and in software, it's always complicated. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of edge cases, error states, everything, right? So I'm still going to break this out a little bit further. I'm going to say, uh, it, within this member self-service territory on my map, there's a few capabilities that I could say are still orthogonal to each other within that. Yeah? So instead of like the state lines, these are sort of the county boundaries or something like that. And uh, you know, I need the raw ability to do a self-service lookup. How can some member get to their membership state in order to operate on it? 
And then maybe they need to change an account, their, uh, change their amount, and that's one flow. Maybe they need to change the credit card, that's another flow, or cancel, that's another. And I can work on these independently. And so what I'm going to do after identifying these things is I'm going to represent them as to-do lists. And these to-do lists are full stack to-do lists. Okay? They include every single role that there is, so that done means done. And uh, uh, we started doing this, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago at when we, were, uh, we had a particularly thorny project. At then we were called 37 Signals, and we started this technique, and man, it has made things easier. Because uh, what happens normally is somebody starts off a project, and you've got a designer there, you've got a programmer there, and then you say, well, here's the design to-dos, and here's the programming to-dos. And then the designer does the design to-dos, the programmer does the programmer to-dos. But you get to a point where, for this whole project, half the design to-dos are done and half the programming to-dos are done. Where are you on the project? Like, I don't know. We just did a bunch of stuff, right? Or maybe we do agile sprints or something like that. We work two, three weeks at a time. But what were we working toward? Do we have some piece of the thing that we can actually say is done? Yeah? What we, what, I actually hand wrote these just because I wanted it to be kind of tool agnostic. So if you use Basecamp to do it, that's what we do. If you use Asana, if you use Omni Outliner, it doesn't matter. Whatever your task tracking system is, we've got design, programming, all of that together in one bundle. And that means that any time I'm thinking about where are we at on the ability of people to change the amount of their membership, Right? Every time, for some reason, that comes up as a support issue, or the customer asks about it, or there's a question about it when we're talking about design ideas, I can say, this is exactly where we're at on that one thing, and here's how close we are to done. Okay, so that's the to-dos. And this kind of gets me from here to here. Yeah, I have this, this map of all the different areas and all the different things that I need to be aware of, and I know right which things are done, which things are not done. And if something's not done, I can even peek and look into it and say, 10% ah, done, right? So this is a wonderful state of mind. And that's why I'm trying to share this with you. Um, so what I want to do next is talk through uh, a couple examples of specific techniques you can use to kind of arrive at this uh, in the project that you're doing. And uh, Let's see. So there's one technique that comes up very often. And uh, it's like this. Uh, when the moment, there's always this moment that first strikes when I realize it's too much. You know, like we were talking about in the beginning. Yeah? There's that moment when it's like, uh, it's, it's just gotten, it's gotten, today's the day, it's too big, I have to do something. Yeah? And the, the, the next step then is I just, I do a simple brain dump uh, but I do it with, this is very important, we need to bring some domain expertise into the process, okay? So this means, you all know what a domain expert is, right? Yeah. So this is the person who, is, who knows about the business that your software is for, the problem your software is for, whatever it is. Who knows about the real life situation that it's meant to address, yeah? And that can be a person who's designated in the team that you're working on, or, uh, you know, sometimes it's just yourself because you have learned enough about the problem and you can put that hat on and say, now I'm being domain expert, okay? And uh, from that point of view, I'm just going to think through, I'm going to dump out all of the different capabilities that need to be there from the point of view of the domain, yeah? So like, what are all the things this, this system has to do? Uh, I've got to be able to create these forms. I've got to be able to link the forms to funds meaning the money for the form goes into a bucket with the right label on it, yeah? Uh, I need to be able to notify expired members, or members need to change their amounts, or the accountant has to reconcile payments with the deposits that come in from Stripe, or whatever it is that I come up with. And you'll notice that these are kind of haphazard. I mean, they're not structured. It's not like member, and then all the things related to membership. It's just like everything we can think of, but from the standpoint of capabilities needed according to our domain knowledge, yeah? And when we have this whole list there, then, even though it's a mess, I mean, this is like a long list of random stuff, yeah? And it's certainly not all-inclusive because there's edge cases, error cases, conditions, blah, 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 right? Tons of things we haven't even thought of. But 
I've got this feeling now that I've got my hands around what the system needs to do in total, right? And there's some facts in front of us. And we can talk about which things we think need to be there and whether we debate about if it's really necessary or not, we can just include it there, yeah? And then the next step after I've got this dumped out is to do some clustering. And here's where we come back to this orthogonality thing again. Uh, this is a bit of an art, but I think it is one of the most important arts that we're responsible to master as product managers. It's learning to identify which things are coupled together versus which things can change independently of each other. Yeah? This is the fundamental skill that is extremely valuable to develop. So I'm going to go through this list, and I'm just going to group them up. And there's different techniques for doing that, but the, you know, the basic point is which of these things share some state, happen at the same time, have you know, uh, intertangled requirements with each other or whatever it is, yeah? And uh, I'm gonna come up with a few groups that make sense to me and make sense to either my domain hat wearing self or the domain expert who's sitting next to me, yeah? And so we've got some groups. So for example, the second group here, creating the forms, you know, defining the funds, we need public facing forms, all these things. These make sense as a bundle. And I'm just gonna give these names. It doesn't matter what the names are, they're just for my own map, but I'm gonna say, Here's one thing, here's another thing, here's another thing. And now I've gone from this big list that I can't really handle down to a small list that I can hold in my mind. And I'm going to go a step further and represent it as a map because it helps me just to draw out this territory line and think this outer line represents everything that I need to know. And then inside of that, here are the boundaries that I'm going to work inside of. Yeah. So that's kind of a main technique for arriving at the map. And then there's one other specific technique that I want to share, which is very often when we're getting together in a meeting or if we are trying to talk through something like this, it's easy that we get to this place where we are just sort of lost in the clouds. You know, it's like, have you ever been in that meeting where you spend 45 minutes debating what the right word is for something, <laughs> right? Or you come in and you've got a really solid product idea and then the designer is just running with it saying, well, you know, we'll do a modal pop-up and that'll have a carousel and the carousel will have an animation and the animation will trigger a push notification and, you know, and it's going to be awesome, right? And then the developer is saying, yeah, and then the forms, we'll make an abstract form interface to make any form ever so that we never have to make a new form <laughs> and, and you're like, and, and, and you need to like pull it back, you know? And then how do you pull it back? It's actually really hard to do. So um, there are two things, whenever we get to this cloudy place, that we can focus on that, pin, that bring us back down to reality. And those two things are, uh, first is time, okay? So what is happening at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday? Why is somebody opening this thing up? What are they trying to do? Okay? And I know that there are user stories and journey maps and all kinds of UX tools, but you're, these, this is going too far into one direction. It's enough that we just focus on time in the domain, processes people are going through, specific moments where they're trying to do things. But then we need something else. In addition to time, we want to focus in on affordances. This is a word you should know from the user interface world, right? The capability is like the teapot that pours water, it has the capability to pour water. The affordance is the handle, yeah? And the wonderful thing about it, a handle or an affordance is that it's extremely concrete, yeah? So if we talk about affordances in software, it's the buttons, it's the labels, it's the fields, it's the navigation links, it's all those things, right? And if we get ourselves down to time and to affordances, we come to a place where we're so concrete about what we're talking about because we are embedded in a situation, talking about clicking on a specific link with a motivation to achieve a specific outcome, right? There's, we talk about so much theory, but if we can just bring these two things together uh, in a session together, it's very helpful. And I want to demonstrate to you a technique I use for doing that. Uh, so this is a, a little shorthand for writing out flows. And the technique basically is I'm going to draw the place that we're at I'm going to draw a bar underneath, and I'm going to list the places that things that we can do, and then we're going to connect it out and talk it through. So here's a short example, okay? Uh, let's say uh, we're working on a product, and this is a marketplace for uh, cake sellers, 
and these cake sellers make cakes for special events, and uh, you're going to browse cakes and find the cake for your event and then buy it, and this marketplace is going to connect you with the person who makes that cake, okay? And we are having a design session here, and we're talking through what does the product need to be, what do we need to include, what are the capabilities, all this stuff. And instead of having this abstract conversation, we're just going to get down to business and we're going to say, well, there's some place where I'm going to browse cakes, okay? And uh, uh, on that browse place, I'm going to draw a line underneath this, and this symbolizes that everything below here are things on the page of interest that I can interact with, okay? And, okay, we could talk about all the different things on the browse screen. We could sketch a quick wireframe if we wanted to, but let's say there's two things of interest in our conversation right now. Um, there's a way to filter the cakes. So I can say birthday cakes versus graduation cakes or whatever it is. Um, and let's say there's also a way I can somehow click, click on a cake for detail, if that's a cake that I want to order. Yeah? And uh, I'm just going to draw some arrows to connect these. So I'm going to say, if I choose to filter from the browse screen, that's going to take me to some kind of a view or state called the filter screen or pop-up or whatever. It actually doesn't really matter what it is. And from there, we're going to have some kind of a form where we'll have fields to do that. And let's say that's a separate conversation. We're just going to, of interest right now is the fact that we can submit that filter. And then when we submit that, that's going to take us back to the browse action, and we're going to see different cakes, right? Okay. And then from the browse action, now I want to click on a cake that is appealing to me, so I'm going to click on the cake. And then from there, I'm looking at a cake detail page. Yeah, so here's cake detail. And underneath the cake detail page, we've got a few things that need to be there. We need to have, let's say, photos of the design that we're ordering. And let's say there's going to be a price. And maybe I need some kind of a mm, commitment that it can be delivered by, because this is going to be for an event. Delivered, not be, by. And I'm going to have a buy button here. And already, we get to have a very interesting conversation. What happens when I hit the buy button? Yeah. Is it add to cart? Is it create an account? Like, what's going to happen there? And because we're talking about time and affordances, we're going to come down to the exact point of what the heck are we going to do, right? What is this system? So let's say we start talking it through, and we've got our domain expert present, or the business people, or whoever it is, and we realize that this is about events. And when you get an event, you're not uh, buying five different birthday cakes for five different years or something like that. We're going to optimize. We're interested in the one cake purchase, okay? We can say, all right, that's the product concept. One cake, good. So buy is going to take me straight to something called a checkout view. And on checkout, I'm going to have, let's say, uh, we'll just basically say there will be some, some credit card fields. And below that, we're going to have a buy now, that really buys it, okay? And then we can talk through, well, what happens when they buy the cake? They buy the cake, and then the cake maker needs to know about the order, so uh, there's going to be some sort of, uh, let's say, uh, mm, new order email that goes out to the cake maker, okay? And that email is going to have, uh, we could talk through it, I mean, we're with a half hour talk, I'm kind of... <laughs> cutting out some details, right? But uh, let's just say there's a new order, and let's say there's an action to accept that order. And then from accepting that order, that's going to take us to some sort of a screen that the cake maker can view, which is like an orders index or a list of orders or something like that, yeah? And then from there, we're going to have a variety of things that they can do, which is say that the order is made or, or refund the order or whatever it is that they need to do, yeah? And from this view, now I can look at all the things that we've sketched out. We can make trade-offs. We can debate different sequences and different requirements and capabilities and all of that. And I can still draw some boundaries. So here again, I can just make, some, make a dotted line here and say, you know, these things, browsing, filtering, looking at the detail for a specific cake, this is all just, this is all just browsing. Yeah? This is one kind of high-level capability that we need to have. And over here, this um, checkout is actually kind of a separate concern. You know, we could say that that's actually orthogonal to browsing. Yeah, it's like how we receive the payment, whether we ask them to create an account or not, all the stuff that happens once they want it. So let's say that, uh, let's say that checkout is, uh, is another area there. 
Yeah. And then uh, looking down at the bottom, this kind of looks like fulfillment. Yeah, there's a whole area related to fulfillment. So let's just make a note of that and say down here, we're going to do order fulfillment. Fulfillment, yeah. And now I've kind of gone through a different process that is a bit more concrete where we can have more conversations about what's really needed and what's not. And notice, we didn't have to talk about pop-ups. We didn't have to talk about modal. We didn't have to talk about web versus mobile. We didn't have to talk about any of those things or database tables. We're talking about what needs to happen from the standpoint of capability. And now we've got a few capabilities that are orthogonal to each other. So I can say, aha, uh -huh, OK, concerning this product that I'm working on, we're going to have a whole section of work that we're going to call browse that we're going to attack. And that's one area. And we're going to have another area that we're going to call checkout. And we're going to focus on that. right? And then after that, we're going to have another area called fulfillment. Notice it's not about, I'm not pulling out uh, Omni Outliner or, uh, not, what is it called, Omni Graffle or you know, Adobe Illustrator or whatever to make the image because it's not about that. It's about finding the boundaries and the names of things and just getting the, getting the idea right. So now I've got a few areas that I could have teams working on independently, that I could track independently, I could start breaking out to-dos for these things, and I'm going to be able to sleep at night when I work at this. Yeah. So that is what I wanted to share with you today. Um, and I've got a little bit of a, we've got, well, we've got three minutes. So, okay, we'll just throw in one extra little detail, which is that you may find once in a while that uh, it's not so easy for people to imagine what is being drawn out in a flow diagram like this. So, you know, sometimes if you have a bunch of designers together and you say, yeah, we'll have a pull down for that and a radio button for that, everybody can picture it. But sometimes that's not the case. So you could also feel free to, to do a slightly more kind of wireframey version of this, which is where I'm gonna say, you know, we're gonna have a browse page and from this browse page, I'm going to have, uh, uh, let's say, a card for every cake. Yeah. And then we're going to have some filter UI on the top here. And there's going to be an affordance there for filtering. When we tap that affordance, we're going to get taken to the filter view. And maybe it's unclear what we really meant by filter. So let's just like sketch that out and say, uh-huh, OK. Is it going to be that we're choosing an event type? Is it that we are choosing a, a kind of a style or what is it that we're going to work with? And then we can actually start to think through the affordances. Again, by thinking of what needs to be on this screen, the affordances, we start to figure out what the data model is going to be, what the requirements are going to be, what kind of information we're going to gather from the cake maker in order to make them filter a bowl, right? All those things. So we could figure out that, how we're going to do that. And that takes us back. And maybe we've got from the cake from the individual cake uh, thumbnail that's going to take us to the cake detail page and so on. Yeah. So that's another way you can do it. But the f I, I didn't want to get into sketching because we get into wireframe land. And wireframe land gets, uh, we often lose the focus right, on time and affordances. So to wrap up, these are the things that I talked about. We talked about sanity. Uh, that's the goal. Uh, we're capable of building everything. We have good people and we're skilled. But how do we keep it all straight and sleep well at night? Um, the main tool I'm using to do that is this map. And uh, it's, uh, it's orthogonal capabilities from the domain. Then in order to actually track this, in order to execute on it, we're making full stack to-do lists. So every to-do list is integrating design, programming, testing, QA, operation support, whatever needs to be there so that the thing is done, right? And we talked about done, what a wonderful thing done is. Yeah? Just having a whole area that every time the customer says, hey, how about people changing their memberships? You say, ah. I'm not even thinking about it. It's already done. Yeah, we're focused on other things. It's a wonderful thing. And then specific techniques how to do it, doing a brain dump with a domain expert, getting all the capabilities just listed out, clustering them based on whether or not they are interrelated or if they're independent from each other, and then working with time and affordance to ground things and make trade-offs and get really concrete and get everybody onto the same page when we are having those unpleasant wandering meetings. 
Yeah. So I hope these tools are useful for you. Uh, if the talk was interesting and you feel like you want to reflect on it a bit, the slides are online at feltpresence.com slash MTP. And uh, I'll be around for the rest of the day. I would love to hear if this like, means anything to you, if you think that you could use it, if it's interesting to you. It's the first time I've talked about it. So let's talk later, especially over a beer. And uh, I'd love to hear from you and, and see what you think. So thank you all very much.